two nights. It depends on where you want to, where you're, I would probably not notice if someone had 213.559 and someone had 213.59 on a test or quiz, I would just blow past that. Oh. A lab is the place where I'm going to go, all right, there's something off there. But on a quiz or test, yeah, odds are against your having done something bizarre and coming out with an answer that close to the right answer. So to average it, you just added up all those numbers and then divide it by the amount of numbers, and then that's how you got 31? Oh, oh, no. So if... So if we looked at the original problem, I'm not worried about this topic, but the original problem, uh, 9 and 10, and so this would be negative 10, negative 19, negative 28. Again, it's, a, it's also a check to see if your acceleration was right, because we had an acceleration of negative 9 meters per second squared, so my change in velocity every second is negative 9 meters per second. And so if I start here and I subtract 9 every time, I should end up with what the problem said was our final velocity. If these time intervals are the same, it's one second every, I have one second every single time, I can find average velocity by, I can add all those up and divide by 11, and I should get the, our initial average velocity of 17 meters per second. Doing it that way only works in acceleration is constant if the time intervals are the same. In our particular case, since it stops at 6.89 seconds, it's stopping in there somewhere. I'm not gonna have intervals of one second because even if I go by a second each time here, this last bit, would I'd have eight ninths of a second. So that technique doesn't work. However, I have equal time increments here of one second. Well, what's so special about one second? I could do every two seconds. If I got rid of that, that, that. If I did it that way, I could average those up, divide by six, and I'll get 17 again. But what's so special about every two seconds? Why not every five seconds? Why not every two and a half seconds? Why not every 10 seconds? And so ultimately, if I just do one time increment and just average those numbers, I'll get the right answer. And that's the technique that we're doing over there for some strange value. All I have to do is just do, again, even increments, I'll just do increments of 6.88 repeating seconds and average the, well, those two numbers. Too late? Can you do displacement again? If not, it's okay. I just... Displacement would be yeah, I... the 170 or the 213? The 170. Alright. I'm sorry. Look at it slightly differently. If you're going, if you're driving on the interstate and you're averaging 50 miles per hour, and you've driven for three hours, how far did you go? 150. Yeah, 150 miles. Same thing we're doing here. If on average you're traveling 17 meters per second for 10 seconds, 170. That's where it comes from. And the same thing in the other case, where on average we were traveling 31 meters a second for 6.9 seconds. And you get a number somewhere around there. The, the look says uh, that was not enough for you. No, it was. It was, it was just somewhere um, there's a disconnect, at least in here. Okay. Other questions at the moment? All 
sorry. I'm going to erase something else. You sure you can't leave it up there? For the test? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? I'm just kidding. We've got the so entire I'm wall there. I should be able to write on that. <laughs> So what we have found so far is that I end up 170 meters from where I started. From here to stopping there, that's 213 point, I'll just round off, six meters. So if that's 213.6 meters and that's 170 meters, what is that? So I travel 213.6 meters to the positive side. I travel 43.6 to the negative side. So the total, total, total distance I travel is, well, the 213.6 plus the That's the distance traveled. thing to do. What's the average speed? Well, average velocity is displacement over time. Average speed is distance over time. We're dealing with scalars. I traveled this far. If an object is turning around, if the object is not traveling in a straight, if, sorry, if an object is doing more than just traveling in one direction, the distance traveled will be larger than the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement. Way too many tests where the distance traveled is the magnitude of the displacement, and I'm thinking it turned around. It, it can't be the same. And then average speed is based upon distance, not this number here. It's been that way too many times too. So Donna? when you ask how far you're asking for distance. Yes. How fast is speed, how far distance. Other questions about this problem? Other questions? Ethan. Real quick about the uh, adding vectors to when it's like going up and to the right. All right, so adding vectors like that? I mean, adding vectors that look like that? Uh, it's more like when it's like there's a box sitting there and it hits, like there's a force going like 20 <coughs> up north and there's a force going like 50. Okay. <coughs> Flip last line, but 
All right, so the total force, total just means I'm adding them up. Vectors don't add norm, like normal things, like, or, sorry, they don't add like scalars. Direction matters. If the answer is not 170 Newton. When I add vectors, I have to add head to tail. So that's 120 Newtons. Now I'm here, now I add the 50. So my answer, my resultant, is a vector from where I started to where I ended. That, whatever color that is, is my answer. Now, if I'm looking for a number here, these are perpendicular to each other. That's a right triangle. It's so always the Pythagorean theorem. So this is my resultant, 50 squared plus 120 squared is equal to R squared and R would be 130. So the magnitude is 130 newtons. The direction is beyond the scope of physics like that. That, so you're looking, that, yes. okay. Julie? Um, it has to do with the source and the vector. Number 21, where you did the, would we be able to do that one? That's, okay. So in a problem where I don't really give you much, I'm not making it nice uh, perpendicular where you can use Pythagorean theorem. So, so I have, I think, four vectors there. And in that particular one, I, I said one of them was a particular size. Uh, why don't I just make this one uh, uh, three newtons? If drawn properly, if that's three newtons, well, this one is longer than that. So this one is bigger than three newtons. This one is slightly shorter, so it's less than three newtons. And that one looks like it's about the same, about three newtons. So I'm not going to do anything with that yet. I do that at the very end. But when I add them, I'm going to be adding head to tail. So I start with one of the vectors. It doesn't matter which one. I pick one. I'm going to start with this one and just go counterclockwise. At least that's my plan right now. I might change that. So I'm going to start with the first one. And I draw the vector so that's the same length and same direction as this one. Uh, I'm going to adjust it a little bit because that. That's supposed to be a straight line. So if it's the same length and same direction, it counts as it's an equal vector. Then I take the next vector. And I do the same thing, except now I'm starting here. So I'm starting at this point. I'm using sophisticated measuring tools here. And then I go to the next one. And then the last one. Each of these vectors here should be the same length, the same direction as one of them over here. I have had students just label them A, B, C, and D and A, B, C, and D, just to keep track. Now, I'm not done yet. All I've done is just done the, basically put the plus sign in between. I need an actual answer. And as over here, my answer is a vector from where I began to where I ended. That is my graphical answer. Now in terms of what's the magnitude, because I did give some idea right here that this was three newtons. 
Well, that is shorter, so it's going to be less than 3 newtons. And it looks like this 3 newtons is a little bit more than twice that in length. So it's going to be somewhere under less than 1.5 newtons, and I'm just going to estimate it somewhere around 1.37 newtons. Now, you don't need that level of precision because it's slightly educated, but you know, at two decimal places, that's just sheer luck if that's right. Now, in a problem like the one that you talked about, number 21, there is a correct answer. I mean, there is, those vectors are a specific direction and a specific length, and what I would do, because I made the problem, is I'd go through and I'd look at the length of each vector that I made and then add them up that way. But you don't have that luxury because I didn't give you the, the software. So you're, this is good enough. I think of the problem I said, get close. What I'm looking for is the process correct, the head to tail, and did you actually draw an answer? And is this number reasonable given that that length is three newtons? Okay, so net, the net force would be the 1.37n. Yes. What about the acceleration of the object? All right, I forget. So if these are forces acting on a single object, I have a net force of 1.37 newtons, F equals ma. I have 1.37 newtons is equal to whatever the mass of the object was. Uh, oh, 8 kilograms. Okay. And so divide by 8 until my acceleration ends up being whatever that is. Okay, okay. Newtons per kilogram or meters per second squared. Somehow, the SASA came across a lot more calculators than we used to have. Parts. If you need part A to get part B, and 
you can't get part A, make up an answer and just use that for part B. <laughs> Later on, if you realize, oh, I know how to do part A now, just make a little note saying, I re realized afterwards how to do part A, here's the part A, and then you can leave the rest of it. But I base the rest of it on this number. I'm trying to see that you know how to do the problem. And when you turn it back in and you staple it, and this is coming from having looked at the other classes' tests, please staple them in the right order. It makes life so much simpler. Yeah, Paul. Unless you see two title pages with equations, then I think it's just that. If I do accidentally give you two tests, you only have to do one of them. <laughs> You're certainly welcome. Do you get double credit? No. <laughs> oh, we do that. Yes, please do.